My next guest, she's not burnt out. She's fantastic, and I'm happy she's on my show. She won a 2018 Daytime Emmy Award as Outstanding Entertainment Talk Show Host and a 2018 NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Talk Series. She's also the first Latina Daytime Talk Show Host on English Language Station. That's really important. Very important. We understand that. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation Emmy winning co-host on The Real, singer, actress, and entrepreneur, Adrian Holton. Hello. That was a lot, I'm huh? so excited to have this conversation with you. First of all, that intro was everything. I appreciate oh. that. <laughs> well, first of all, Adrian, come on now. You introduce people on a regular basis. Uh, now, if I come on, if I have you come on my show and just go, uh, let, let me let, let me just bring on the show right now. She's a singer, actor. You see on the real, Adrian Houghton. That is not fair. <laughs> Thank you. I loved it. I appreciated that. Well, well you deserve it. Uh, you, you've had, you, you're, here's a great thing about you is that... Uh, you know, you know, you, you started at a young age. I say, can we say a child yeah. star? Can we say that a teen star? What, what, what can we say that? Yeah, I was, I was, I was fourteen, going on fifteen when right. I first got my first record deal at Sony. Yeah, right. And so that transition to adulthood doesn't work for a lot of people. They doesn't work. How did you manage that transition? Because we got a lot of things we want to talk about. But also on this show, I like to slow it down so people can understand that. It's not a magic trick. It's not you walk out in Hollywood, somebody just so taps true. you on the shoulder, or that mm-hmm. you, you, like your fame happened overnight. There's a journey to yeah, this fame. Yeah, not at all. And I love the fact that you're not satisfied with your current fame. You know, you're planning for the future, yeah. but you got that first break. How did that happen? And then also, how did you, because well, there were some dips there. There were some dips. And then for sure. what kept you motivated? Let's talk. I think, number one, I really do believe in, I heard Oprah say once that there is no such thing as luck, and it is really just preparation preparation meeting opportunity. Mm-hmm. And uh, my husband and I actually just did Carnegie Hall this past Saturday. It was like a major bucket list for us to perform there. Mm-hmm. And um, for us, he said that his school teacher would always tell him, like, this was a thing, like, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Mm-hmm. And the answer was practice, practice, practice. <laughs> but um, I really do feel that if you have a goal in your life, I-, I think there's even the book that says, how many hours is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, 10,000 hours, you know, to actually, that you have to put into something until you can actually say you're an expert at it or that you're even good at it. Mm-hmm. And I really can say that I put in those hours as a young girl for acting and singing and performing. It was something that I really love to do. So even though this is a crazy story, I was prepared when the opportunity uh, 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 presented itself, which was I had decided that because I didn't know anybody famous, I had no connections to the industry, I didn't even know where to begin or how someone gets an audition or any of those right. things. I grew up in the projects in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, um, very humble beginnings, and um, I, I thought, okay, I don't even have enough money to put together a portfolio to even audition for a Juilliard mm-hmm. or, or those kind of um, schools. So I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go into the health professions field. And we actually got into a school uh, here, the Stuyvesant Building, Health, uh, health Professions and Human Services. Mm-hmm. And my second year there, they had you do internships. Mm-hmm. So I was just filing some boxes and somebody walked in. I also believe in destiny and that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. So I think that definitely plays into it. But a man walked in uh, on some crutches, and I guess he was getting some something done at the hospital. And he literally turned to me and said, Yo, Ma, you sing? I don't know if I was humming by the, by the filing cabinet, <laughs> but uh, he's like, Yo, Ma, do you sing? And I was like, Yes. Would you like to hear a song in Spanish? I got a salsa tune, a gospel song, or a pop song. What do you want to hear? But that's... That but you were ready, that though. But you were ready, to, though. I was ready. Mm-hmm. I was ready. I was prepared. And um, he actually was the person that got me in touch for my first audition, which was for my first group, 3LW. So you're like, what the heck? What a random story. But I was prepared. I not only was prepared for that moment, but when I, when I went into the audition, there were tons of girls there auditioning for this manager who mm-hmm. at the time had discovered C.C. Peniston and mm-hmm. the singer Joe. And I was ready, not only with a song in English, but a song in Spanish. I was mm-hmm. like, any opportunity I was prepared for. So that's kind of how I got my start from 3LW, then got into Cheetah Girls, from Cheetah Girls. Um, that's kind of where, like you said, it was like, well, now what happens? How do you transition from being a kid tween uh, star to now preparing for what I wanted to do for the future? Which is, which is, and, oh, my key, and, you, and you're a role model, yeah. too. Don't forget that. You're a role model. 
Thank you. I, I think for me, the most important thing with that transition was that it had to be organic. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where a lot of people go wrong in their minds. They're like, okay, I'm done with Disney channel. And now I'm going to go show people that I'm going to, that I'm a grown up. Mm. but that isn't actually how the transition in real life happens. We don't actually go from being teenagers to now suddenly we've got adulthood and we're adulting and we've got this down. It doesn't really work that way. And for me, it was important to show that transition and to um, be honest about that from, I was like, okay, well, also, being strategic and having a plan is super important. I always tell people when you're mapping out your business or what it is you're going to do, you've got to have somewhat of a plan. And my plan was thinking, okay, well, after people watch the Disney Channel, where do they go from there? Mm -hmm. Maybe MTV? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was my next step. I then ended up hosting on MTV. And for a while there, I was kind of in the space of, well... I, I want to be the one inter being interviewed, not interviewing people. Mm -hmm. And I even went through that weird struggle of like, well, why do people keep calling me as like a behind, like a like a personality, an on air personality? I would get calls from extra. I guess people had seen what I did on MTV, mm -hmm. and they were like, extra was calling for me to do red carpet interviews, mm -hmm. and I would be like, but. But I want to be on the red carpet. I don't want to be mm -hmm. interviewing people mm -hmm. on that. And sometimes mm -hmm. you can even fight your own mm -hmm. destiny and mm -hmm. think, well, this is not what I want. But God somehow just kept presenting these opportunities to do interviews, entertainment tonight. Then I got a call that's like, well, they're doing this talk show they're putting together of, you know, it's going to be the first of its kind, women of color, uh, a little bit of a younger demographic, a little bit more hip, uh, more pop culture conversations and I was like, well, you know what? Let me just go for it. I don't really know that this was my, <laughs> necessarily my plan. I love that meme that I've seen on Instagram that's like how people think you get successful versus how it really happens. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. people think it's this straight line from my plan from point A to point B. And when it really is like a zigzag hot mess. Mm -hmm. And that really is how it's been for me. I never sought out or planned to become a, a talk show host, but the opportunity kept presenting itself. And I'm like, God, clearly you have a plan that I'm not aware of, but here we go. And, and, and it I always tell my husband, the main thing is to go where the love is. Well, you know, the, thing about, the, it, love is. the thing about it that stands out consistently is that when God calls, you're ready. Mm -hmm. And that's, yep. that's the key. And you're not, and you're fearless. And that's because that fearless yeah. is, 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 is derived through preparation. Like you said, when he said, can you sing? Yes. Yes, I can sing. I, oh, what, English or Spanish? When you get an opportunity to interview somebody, even though in your mind, see, a lot of people shut down blessings because they go, that's not what I want. Exactly. That's not what well, I your want. your ego gets in the way. Oh, You're yeah. You're like, what do you mean I'm going to be interviewing, um, you know. I want to be her. Girl, like, I want to be up. him. You or, know, oh, 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 exactly. I want to be the one being interviewed. Oh, you're going to interview Miley Cyrus. Okay, but but I was on Disney Channel too. Why isn't she interviewing me? You don't get what I mean. Like your ego can get in the way of that. You've got to put that aside and recognize that it's a blessing. It's a if it's not the door, maybe it's the window that's going to lead to the next place you get to. And and I really had to recognize that. I recognized okay, uh, I never would have thought. Wow, now I'm an Emmy winning talk show host from something as simple as interviewing people on a red carpet. And but you're that good. really did and you're good. open those opportunities for me. Thank you so much. I got to say that. I can say that very honestly. I'm on the phone with uh, Adrian Houghton. Uh, she's an Emmy winning, as she told you, from The Real. Let's tell you what talk show it is. It's The Real. She's a singer, actress. When you come back, I want to talk to the businesswoman. I'm interviewing the businesswoman. Right back with more Money Making Conversations. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald. Uh, as you know, I've been uh, doing Money Making Conversation show for a while. And the guests I bring on the show, I, I feel change lives. I think if you listen to their interview, listen to their stories, you tell them that it, what I try to get out of the stories, let you know that there's a plan. When uh, when opportunity presents themselves, present themselves to you, leap for it. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let the unknown stop you. Allow the opportunity to to consume you and feel joy in that consumption. Uh, on the phone is Adrian. You have a great show, Adrian, on the show that I, uh, it's a YouTube show. It's called All Things yes. Adrian. And the, 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 the subline is shares a modern day approach to entertaining, decorating, beauty, and cooking. I've seen, I'm going to tell you what shows I've seen. I've seen Holiday Party <laughs> Decor. I, I yes. love the one with Q&A with Mom. 
because uh, Q&A with Mama, I, I've yes. seen that one. And Thank the, you. the pajama you. party, which I think had a, the, the one had the biggest numbers was uh, uh, the Beach House Tour. Beach House. If you, everybody yes. want to know your business. Everybody want to know your business. <laughs> had a, had a big, so they, let, want, they all want to walk through my house. They, they walk I, through I, too, John. My, my husband likes I know. My husband likes to say, you know, that I was the Latina Martha Stewart. So he would always tell me that. And I, and I finally got approached. A lot of people would see things that I was doing in my house, whether right. it was on Instagram. I, right. I loved putting floral arrangements together or decorating. Or uh, we would always talk about on the reel that I throw a good party. I'm like, I love a good fiesta. So uh, I was approached to work with uh, an incredible company called Kin Community, mm-hmm. who was doing something really awesome. Obviously, everybody knew about... YouTubers now becoming celebrities, and mm-hmm. this was a real thing. You, you know, you even read about the young kid that I think is like four years old, and he's made ridiculous like toys. billions of dollars with toys. Yeah, millions, <laughs> and he's got like two billion followers on on YouTube. Yeah, so it's things like that that they were really tapping into and recognizing. Wow, this digital world is is exploding. So instead of taking YouTube uh, people that were undiscovered and found on YouTube, he was like, why can't we take, go the opposite direction mm-hmm. and take celebrities and put them on YouTube? Mm-hmm. And I, I was, uh, they actually reached out to me and I was like, oh my God, this is an amazing opportunity. And I again recognize that the world is going digital. Uh, sadly, a lot of the people that are in my generation and these new upcoming millennials, they don't even have televisions anymore at no, this point. They don't. You know, they're watching everything on their phones. Uh, it, it's all Apple TV or Netflix. They they have all of these um, digital streaming uh, platforms instead. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is a totally new way to reach. Even like my my lit kids, I call them. They're my step kids, but I call them my lit kids. Mm-hmm. I, I was watching that they only were watching things on YouTube and were obsessing about YouTubers. And I was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. And so to be able to be given that opportunity was so awesome. And we called the show All Things Adrian right. because we wanted it to be limitless. We're mm-hmm. like, it wasn't limited to one thing or the other, but that I literally could do anything on the channel. And it really has been awesome to see the subscribers grow, to really see the impact that it has. And um, I've learned so much. Mm-hmm. Simple things from the fact that now you can click on uh, a product that I'm using when I'm doing a makeup tutorial mm-hmm. and you can buy it at mm-hmm. my store right then and there. Mm-hmm. There's the description line underneath that can lead you straight to, you know, renting my Malibu vacation home. There is so many new things that can be done digitally with YouTube. And uh, also we do it on Facebook as well, uh, which is just so awesome that that really is the new platform for this new generation. It really is. You know, the thing that I like, uh, this is what I love talking about, t- talking to you and listening to you multiple streams of income that that, that exactly. just pops out it pops out and That's as an entrepreneur key. as an entrepreneur when i look at these things a lot of people say they don't have time how do you marry your success because we're going to talk about the jewelry line you know we're talking about yeah. the all things adrian we're talking about being a fantastic wife you know what i'm saying we're talking about Thank also you. you still perform all these things mean yeah. that there has to be a balance and i'm gonna tell you That's something right. adrian i failed i failed at it and I and I admire the fact that you figured it out. How did you figure out? How did you uh, figure out that balance was necessary for you to be successful? Well, I'm literally sitting right now in workout clothes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in New York City at a hotel. My husband is sitting right next to me. He's handling work on his phone, and we're going to get ready to go to the gym in a second. But I think it really is number one for me. My family comes first, and I recognize that. And it's about working. Uh, smarter, not working harder. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was the first thing that my husband and I spoke about with what, what it was that we wanted for our future. Mm-hmm. He's accomplished so much in his career. And, you know, somebody may look at mine and be like, oh, you're set as well. But mm-hmm. for me, it's more so the idea of in these next coming years, what am I going to do that is going to sustain not just myself, but my family, mm-hmm. my legacy, Your legacy? And how can I work smarter versus working harder? Mm-hmm. So something as simple as, choosing to do all things Adrian, I shoot it in my house. What does that allow? That allows for me to be home. Mm -hmm. That allows for me to hang out with my husband in between takes. Mm -hmm. That allows for me to um, decide to be, one, number one, to be authentic because I'm actually in my home, Mm -hmm. but two, to allow um, them to be a part of my world versus me having to leave my home and do things. So that's one way I think that's just awesome. And it actually helps 
for people to see into my real life, and right. that that in itself helps my my brand. So you was so you, um, you would approach you were approached to do the YouTube show, okay? Yeah. And I had an option. Here's, here's, I had here's, an here's, option whether or not I would want to rent another place to shoot in, or I could oh, do it in my no, home. I was oh, like, no, oh, no, absolutely, no, mm, come mm, do it mm, in my mm, house. Mm, 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 mm. Keep it real. Yeah. Keep it real. Here's here's the great thing about her. You know, she was offered a singing opportunity. You know, it's it's an aura of good about you that I feel that we need Thank to you. we need to back up and, and mention because some people are unapproachable. I, I know some people would tell me, Rochelle, are you mad?" I said, "No, do I look mad?" <laughs> yeah, I just got one of those faces. If if I'm not, if I'm not if I'm just sitting there, people think, "Boy, you better not go and talk to Rochelle. He don't look like he having a good day." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so so you have first of all an approachable look. And then when and then yeah. when it, when you approach, you ready. You know, it's not you know you you ready to to count down the opportunity. Like you offered that the real, yeah. you know, you audition for that, the YouTube show, you audition for that, and you you know, audition. They gave it to you because they want to do celebrities versus unknown talent. Said, hey, let's make it work. Let's do it backwards. Let's take a star yeah. and then build her brand. And you go, take that's her what off I want. Of TV and put her on YouTube. Yeah, the Where future. There were so many the future. YouTubers that were trying to get to TV, but they didn't realize that the future is is digital uh, networking. And I think, again, it is about saying yes, saying yes to the opportunities, not being afraid, being fearless, being approachable. All of those things definitely go into making a great uh, business venture. But I also think you said making the time. I truly believe that if you want to do something, you will find the time to make it happen. But for me, the best way to be able to do all these things is to create a brand. Like I'm looking towards the future and actually starting a family with my husband as well, you know, mm-hmm. growing our family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what can I do? What is the space that I can enter in that allows me to be creative still, to do the things that I love to do, but at the same time involve my family so that I can spend more time with them. Mm-hmm. I want my audience that, you know, if, if maybe the next thing is, you know, doing something that is family-based, that is home-based. That's what All Things Adrian is about. And I, I love that I can share my family and my home while the cameras are running, and that helps me. Now, where the jewelry line stepped in was that had always been a dream for me. Again, that incorporates my family mm-hmm. uh, because it is. I launched the jewelry line. It's called XIXI, mm-hmm. and it launched on uh, eleven eleven, which is what the Roman numerals stand for. Mm-hmm. And um, my first collection from the line was called Faith and Familia, mm-hmm. and that in itself again celebrates my faith. It celebrates my family, awesome. and we created replicas of the pieces that were given to me as a child that were handed down to me from praying hands, necklaces, and uh, these pendants and, and cross earrings, and just kind of the things that I grew up wearing. I grew up. Like I said, in the Lower East Side, there's like tons of jewelry stores on Delancey Street, and and it really reflects who I am, my upbringing, and that's kind of the brand and building that. And again, that allows me to still be a great wife, a great lit mom to my mm-hmm. to my lit kids, and 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 really make it about a family. Even now, I'm in the talks about possibly creating a uh, fashion I'm, line. <laughs> Too much. I know it's like it never stops, right? No, a but there, there's some. You, you can't stop. I'm gonna tell you something. Once I you know. be given an opportunity, and you, the light turned on in your brain. It it, it, it turned right. on, and you guess what? You're not gonna let it go dim. You know, give me an opportunity. I'm gonna show you. But it's all it's all professionally done, though. You know, you're not jumping out there without Thank a plan. You. You're not jumping out there saying, "Hey, throw me a bone," and I just start gnawing on it. You're gonna say, "Hey, hey, I don't do bones. Yep. I don't do bones." Exactly. You know, I do opportunities. But even in that case, you know, with the jewelry line, I brought on my oldest lit daughter, Mariah. She's one of the creative directors with the jewelry line with me. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about. It's also creating family, and that allows us to bond doing something. She'll also be helping me with the fashion stuff that I'm working towards, but us taking trips to Hong Kong as a family. I'm, I'm always thinking about how can I work and do things that we're creative and that we're passionate about, but how can we do them together? Awesome. So even where music is involved, you know, I love singing. Well, my husband sings. Let me do that with him. And I, <laughs> I love that it. we kind of do this collaborative effort as a family. And for me, that's what it's all about. I'm going to tell you something. Um, you know, I love Lonnie Love on the show. Uh love known her. her for years. Tamara, uh, sister, sister. Yes. So I got history with her. Love. Now I got a third one that I love on the show. I, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Do, let me do a favor. Thank let me you help you. For having First, me. I got a I got a fan club with over two hundred fifty thousand fan club members. You send me a banner so I can promote your jewelry line. I, I got sure social will. media. You can get it at 
shopxixi.com. Everything's available there. We're actually launching something really special for Christmas, so it'll be awesome. So send that banner to me so I can take care of you. You stay strong and tell your husband. I know him from my days of 